Hello everyone, my name is Minister Wallace and I really appreciate you for uh, clicking on the channel. I hope the title uh, kind of whets your appetite a little. Uh, we're going to be talking about six laws of spiritual health. Six laws of spiritual health. And I really just want to share something with you uh, that I believe that God laid on my heart. I don't know if you know it or not, but did you know there were approximately 4,000 different religions? You got to... <laughs> You got to kind of let, let that absorb for a while. 4,000 different religions. That's a lot. That is a lot. There's over in the Christian, in the what we call Protestant or Christian uh, realm, there's 200, at least 200 different denominations. So with all those religions and all those different denominations, especially in a time like this when a lot of folks are looking for desiring and needing clear guidance or or even maybe sometimes folks may not want uh, or need or get clear guidance but at the very minimum I think everybody wants consistent guidance you at least want something that is consistent and I would argue that in no form of media uh, no form of friends not even me uh, no form of minister or pastor uh, and, and, and that's not not to say that they're that they're bad that's to say that we're all human so we're inconsistent all of us so with 4,000 religions 200 denominations in the Christian uh, faith alone how do we find some consistent guidance and when we get it how do we stay spiritually healthy well that's what we're going to look at today and again I want to thank, thank you for tuning in to the channel uh, I hope you got your Bibles because uh, we're going to take, take a look at and just go through six ways six ways that you can 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 maintain your spiritual health I think this is a relevant message um, I think with what is going on in the world I don't know how long this vid video will be up on YouTube but what's going on in the world now is the COVID-19 pandemic uh, it is spreading. Uh, it is a it is a live virus, so it's going to um, it, it's 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 going to be around for a while. Uh, uh, um, I think at first we were looking for a quick fix, um, but I think we realized, as my grandfather used to say, we're in it for the long haul. So we need we need I need you need we need to be uh, encouraged. We need consistent. Uh, guidance. So I want to again six laws of spiritual health, uh, uh, and and we're going to run down down through them. But just to give you a quick snapshot of what they are, uh, we're going to talk about parents. We're going to talk about food. We're going to talk about rest. We're going to talk about exercise. We're going to talk about being clean, and we're going to talk about love. But before we talk about any of those, let's talk to our God uh, in heaven. Our Father, which art in heaven, we thank you, God. For this word we thank you god for this message we thank you god for all the hearers and we thank you god already for blessing those who hear your word god who maybe not necessarily hear what i say or how i say it but uh to be able to hear your word and also ask god that you that you touch and bless your servant god who is delivering your word uh, that i be as accurate as possible god so that your your people god would not be misled all this god we ask and pray in your son's name jesus christ amen I tell you what, when I, I knew there were thousands of religions, uh, have taken several uh, world religion classes. I knew there were a lot, but man, I had no, no, no idea, or I, I don't remember having any idea that there were over 4,000. And then within the Christian denomination, I think 200 is about right. It may even be lower. So how do we, how do we maintain uh, our spiritual health. Well, the first one is the first thing you're going to need is you're going to need a parent. The first law of maintaining your spiritual health is you're going to need a parent. Listen to what Paul says in 1 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verses 14 through 15. 1 Corinthians, fourth chapter, verses 14 through 15. He says, the Bible says, I do not write these things to, to shame you but to admonish you as my beloved children. For if you were to have countless tutors in Christ, yet you would not have any fathers. For in Christ Jesus I became your father 
through the gospel. So what Paul is saying, saying here is that you can have countless tutors. And a tutor is a fantastic thing to have. They can advise you, they can coach you, they can mentor you. But, what, but, but the point here in a figure of speech that Paul is using, the point that he's trying, I'm trying to make is that you need a father. You need a parent. You need someone to give you life. Paul, in a sense, is saying that uh, he, he, he is not professing himself to be Christ. But what Paul is saying, you can have tutors and you can have all that stuff, but if you don't have someone to lead you to life, if you don't have someone who can lead you to Christ, who Christ gives us life, then it's useless. Paul knew then, just like we know now, there are countless folks, thousands, if not <laughs> uh, at least half of the local church is attended by folks who haven't given their life to Christ. There's multiple different categories. We don't really have a lot of time to get into each one of them. But there are folks who, yes, there are folks who go to church, who praise, who sing on the choir, who teach Bible study, who do all types of things, but they haven't given their life to Christ. What Paul is saying here, the first thing, the first thing that we need to do to be spiritually healthy is we need to be given life. And Christ is the one who gives us life. So that's why Paul is using the father sense, because our parents is who, is who give us life. So the first law in spiritual health is you need a parent. You need someone to lead you, to, to bring you to life. The second thing that you, uh, that the, the second law of spiritual health is that you got to eat. I mean, you, you have to have food to sustain you. I think we all understand that you have to have food to sustain you. In 1 Timothy 4, 6, the Bible says that we need to be nourished with the words of faith. Nourished. Now, there is a difference in just eating and snacking. Uh, and then there is a difference in, 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 and then there is being nourished. Listen to what 1 Peter 2, 2 says. The Bible says it's newborn babes. As newborn babes long for the pure milk of the word in order that they may grow into in salvation. We need to be nourished by God's word. The food that we as believers need to eat to be spiritually healthy is God's word. Now, does that mean that that is the only thing that you should be doing? From the time that you wake up to the time that you go to sleep, I'm not saying that the only thing you need to be doing is reading God's Word. Because if you think about it, I think we understand saying this, if you think about it, how many times a day do, do you eat? Don't answer that if it's over six or eight. I know there are some fad diets out there to tell you to eat eight or nine or ten. But just for sake of argument, let's say it is that high. Let's say you eat six meals a day. Well, there's 24 other hours in the day. What are you doing? You're being sustained by what you have put into your body. I think we all understand, too, what we put into our body matters. During this pandemic, some of the experts have told, told us, and they're right, that, hey, look, uh, your health uh, uh, on the front side, if you were to get infected, matters. It matters a lot. Part of our health is what we eat. So, no, I'm not saying that to be the best Christian or to adhere to this, that you need to be reading God's word. But what I am saying is as you, that God's word is what sustains us. God's word is what is consistent. So when you eat it, that should sustain you. In other words, we burn those calories. You live by it. You live off of it. So in other words, your actions, the way you carry yourself, the way you conduct yourself, the things that you say should be from what's in your belly, and your belly should be full of God's Word. The third law of spiritual health. You need rest. You got to get some sleep. Uh, sleep is uh, sleep, diet, and exercise any fitness person any any doctor uh, will tell you that those three things are most critical so you got to have rest you got to have rest but what are we talking about in a spiritual sense Colossians 3:15 listen to what the Bible says in Colossians 3:15 and let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts to which indeed you are called in one body and be thankful so in a spiritual sense, 
that rest that we get is that peace in our heart. It doesn't mean that there's not drama going on around us left and right, but we need spiritual rest. And we cannot get that. You will never get that watching the 24-hour news feed. I'm not saying not to watch the news, but I'm just saying if that's your primary source of input, you will not find rest. We cannot find rest by depending and hanging on to every word that any given elected politician says. You won't find rest. You will get information, you will be informed, but you will not find rest. Listen to what the psalmist says in 5522 in regards to having rest. He says, cast your burden on the Lord and he will sustain you. He will never permit the righteous to be moved. Now that does not mean that if you cast your faith on the God that you will never have any drama. No, that's not what that means. That also doesn't mean that, uh, that just because you won't, the opposite will happen. What it means is, is that Christ, Christ, our Lord and Savior, He gives us rest. He gives us that peace of mind. No, he doesn't magically. You don't rub your Bible on your chest if you get infected with COVID-19 and you're healed. No, that's crazy. But what he can do and what is sensible is that through Christ, he can give you rest. The fourth uh, law of spiritual health. So you need exercise. You got to. I, I'm, I'm not sorry. I'm going to be like... Uh, uh, Beyonce says, sorry, not sorry. Look, we need to exercise. No matter what age group you are, it is proven by experts, again, that, that exercise is critical. So in a spiritual sense, let's listen to James 5.13. If anyone among you is suffering, let him pray. If anyone is cheerful, let him praise. So James, I like James. He is very practical. He's a pragmatic person. So James said, look, if there is anyone among you that is suffering, let them pray. If there is anyone among you that is cheerful, let them praise. What a great thing about these is these are interchangeable. If you are doing fantastic, you should pray and praise. If you're not doing so good and you're worried and you got a little bit of fear, then you need to pray and praise. The thing is, is this, this exercises. Christ asked us to try him. Christ asked us to reach out to him. Christ asked us to depend on him. We got to exercise that. If you don't never exercise that and you don't never see what Christ can do for you, of course you're going to sit on your couch and just, all right, well, it ain't going to happen. Of course when a storm comes or the earth, earth shakes one time up under your feet, of course you're going to jettison the place that you are. Of course you are, because you've never exercised that ability. You've never tried Christ. You've never reached out. But see, for those of you who have, for those of you who have pre-COVID-19, you've been on the verge of something in your life. For those of you who have tried Christ, you're more stable now. Does that mean you're not scared? No. Does that mean you're not worried? No. But it does mean that you have rest because you have exercised that uh, that you have exercised your faith in Christ. Prayer and praise exercise those muscles, and that will keep you spiritually vibrant. The fifth thing, the fifth, uh, the fifth law of uh, spiritual health. You got to keep clean. You you. You got to keep clean. Uh, cleanliness, some folks say cleanliness is next to godliness. Uh, uh, okay, we probably need to wrap some context around that. But you need to keep clean. I think most of our parents, that's one, one, one of the things that they told, 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 told us, uh, you learn that you have to keep, keep, keep clean. So what do we mean in a spiritual sense? Well, listen to Ephesians, the fifth chapter, verses 25 through 26. It says, Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing water through the word. Look, if you are, if you are dirty, you go outside, you ride your bike, you work in your garden, you go running, you just been up all day moving around and you sweaty. Don't you feel a little irritated? You can't sleep at night. Have you ever... I know good Christians have never done this, so that's why I'm speaking to some of the soldiers out, out there. Not the Air Force guys. Y'all took y'all take showers all the time. But from the, some of the soldiers out there, you done been out in the field and you done racked out, went to sleep, 
and uh, you hadn't taken a shower. Now you slept, but you didn't sleep as good as you could when you was clean. Well, in a spiritual sense, we have to keep clean and cry. And 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 um, the Bible is saying here in Ephesians five twenty five that. Christ keeps his church clean by the cleansing of God's word. So in a spiritual sense, we need to take in God's word. We got to because we're dirty with the rhetoric of politicians. We're dirty with the with the with with the fear just being sold 24 hours a day. We're dirty with the just just the endless numbers of facts and data all steering towards it's getting worse. It's not going to get get better. We are wet with just capitalistic, just buy, 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 get, get, get. We are dirty with the never-ending Facebook feeds, all of, all of the Instagrams, and they're fantastic, but we're dirty with the never being good enough. We're dirty with that. If you don't cleanse yourself of that, that stuff will wear you out. It, it wears me out, and I try to push away from it, but it wears me out. So the only way that we can be cleansed is cleansed spiritually is through what God's word says. It says it right here in Ephesians 5, 25 through 26. Christ loved the church. He gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with water through his word. God's word and his Holy Spirit, that's what cleanses. And finally, the sixth law of spiritual health that you need is you need love. You have got to be loved. You have got to feel love. You have got to, we are, we are driven off love. And I'm not talking about just the emotive love. I'm, we don't have time to really get into it, but you need love. In John 13, 34, the Bible says, A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. So you must love one another. We have got to show love. We have got to give love. We need to be loved. It drives us. It fuels us. And again, you will not get this from Fox. You will not get this from CNN, MSNBC, Google, Twitter, Facebook, IG. You will not get love from there. You won't. Now, I'm not going to name all the other places you could get love, but it's one place I can guarantee you that you will find love, and that's through God's Word, and that's through a relationship with Jesus Christ. These have been the six spiritual laws, the six laws of spiritual health, and these laws, I believe, if practiced, will help you to maintain your spiritual health. With that, I want to say God bless you. I want you to continue to stay within God's Word, and you're in, in I was going to say, in Jesus' name, amen.